Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part two of my Logic Pro 11 Session Players and Chord Track Explored course. In this video, we're gonna dive into some of the finer details of customizing your drummer patterns. Unlike previous versions of drummer, you can now separate the pattern of the kick and snare from the pattern played by the hi-hats, cymbals, or toms. This gives you even more customization over your drummer patterns, in addition to being able to customize your fills, add ghost notes, add additional percussion like shakers and tambourine, or create your own custom kick and snare pattern. Before we get into the video, I need to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox introduces a new standard in file storage, sharing, and collaboration for musicians, bands, artists, producers, and mix engineers. You can upload audio files, stems, mix bounces, and even full DAW sessions. Collaborators can then provide timestamped feedback and voice recordings on your tracks. Additionally, Boombox offers a full suite of collaborative tools. This includes Boombot AI, a virtual co-writer that provides AI tools such as stem separation, vocal removal, and MIDI idea generation. Pitch and share your songs, beats, or your samples with a private or public playlist, create custom artist pages with your own branding, find new collaborators and clients, visit boombox.io and sign up today to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their paid plans for more storage space and additional pro features. One last thing I wanna bring up that I promise I won't mention again, if you want to download and watch this entire course right now without any YouTube ads or sponsored segments, head over to my website, logicproguide.com to download the entire course for only $19.99 USD. This is a two hour course that you can download directly to your computer and take it anywhere with you. I've also included a couple of demo sessions uh, that we use at the end of the course. And if you don't wanna do that, that's totally fine. You'll never get any sales pressure from me. You can still watch the whole course for free here on YouTube. Now up top here, there's another pattern selector. And what you can do here is you can choose between a hi-hat lead pattern, a ride cymbal or crash cymbal lead pattern, or a tom lead pattern. So if you're a right-handed drummer, typically your right hand's gonna be playing the hi-hat or the ride or the toms, at least in a groove like this. So this allows you to switch between three distinct types of pattern for each and every preset. Now for each of these, like I just said, there are different patterns for these. For example, if I go to the ride cymbal, you can see this is all gray notes. So it's just gonna be sort of soft uh, eighth notes. Yeah, it's kind of softly crashing it. But if I choose this one, you'll see that there's a dark circle here, which means on the downbeats, we're gonna get an accent. So sort of loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft. And we can choose another one here. This one adds in some 16th notes as well. I'm gonna go back to the hi-hat pattern, but let's see what some of these other ones sound like here. Yeah, so on the up beats here, we're getting some harder accents and it looks like every other bar, we're getting like an open hi-hat or a semi-open hi-hat there as well. Cool, I like that one. And then the last few things you can do on the main page here is you can adjust how many fills you want to hear and the complexity of those fills. So if you want fills like every bar or every other bar, you can roll this up into a, a higher value like this. And then the fill complexity is going to determine how fast and how many notes there are in the fills. Cool. 
I find this option really helpful when you're trying to come up with drum fills, but you're not a drummer and you're programming your own drum beats, but not using drummer. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll do something like this and then I'll just convert this over to MIDI and then I can copy and paste each bar over and try it out with my existing drum pattern that I'm uh, that I'm programming. And if you want to convert to MIDI, you just right click or control click on any session player region and then you just go down to convert and then select convert to MIDI region. And then once you use that option, it'll show up here at the top of the list. Okay, so I don't need that many fills. Let's pull that down a bit. And then you can also add swing and you can add the swing on the eighth note or on the 16th note. So the eighth note's gonna be a little more noticeable. Or you can add the swing on the 16th notes. Now, technically speaking, if you come up to 66%, uh, that is going to be like a perfect like triplet swing. But generally, you don't want it that high because it sounds a little weird. The way humans actually play is they, they tend to have... Uh, you know, not not like a triplet style swing. So I generally will pull this up, you know, around 60 ish for sort of a natural uh, sort of a natural swing. So here there are no 16ths in the hi hat, but they are in the toms. So I'll roll this back a bit for a bit more of a natural feel in the tom fills. And all of these values you can lock. So if you just click that lock button, it will lock those values and you can no longer make changes on them until you unlock them. So it's just a quick way to make sure that you don't accidentally change those parameters. Now, if you go under details, this will allow you to add more or less ghost notes. So ghost notes are little soft pattery snare hits um, that are sort of in between the hi-hat hits or in between the main kick and snare hits. So just helps give the pattern a, a bit more, you know, forward moving groove. So here's with no ghost notes. So when I pull up the ghost notes, you'll see it adds in all these little sort of pattery soft uh, snare hits in between the main kick and snare hits. Now you can also customize where on the drum and what style of playing you're doing on the snare. Um, you can choose automatic, but center is just gonna be like a standard snare hit right in the center of the drum. Uh, but if you choose rim shot, this is basically means you're hitting the drum, but you're also hitting the, the edge of the drum and you get like a really loud thwack out of it. So for like heavier genres for hard rock and stuff like that, a lot of times they're always playing rim shots. But I do like that it distinguishes between the playing style of the main hits and the ghost notes. So the ghost notes are not rim shots here. Then if I go side stick, this is like a rim tap. Yeah, ghost notes probably not so great with side stick. And then we have tom. So this just replaces the snare with a tom. So it's accenting where the snare would normally be accented with a tom. I'm gonna go back to center and then under percussion, you can choose one of nine different auxiliary percussion sounds. So there's three tambourines, three shakers and three claps.
So I'm gonna go with the tambourine here. Although if you want to separate your auxiliary percussion from drummer, you can totally do that just by using one of the percussion drummers, which I'll go over in another video. Okay, so if you're using a hi-hat pattern, you will be able to choose the sort of default position of the hi-hat. So you can do closed, half closed, half open, open or wide open. And if you're not a drummer, this is what the foot pedal on the hi-hat does. If you press it all the way down, it closes the hi-hat. You get a shorter sound. It doesn't ring out. As you loosen your foot off of the pedal, you'll get a more open sound. And depending on the distance uh, where you've set the, the hi-hat, you can get like a completely wide open sound where it's just, you know, ringing uh, and, and, and not muted uh, whatsoever. Also in the details page, you can push or pull your pattern. So if you look real close at the drummer region and then we push the feel forward, you'll see that the majority of notes are rushing a bit. And if you pull it back, the notes are gonna sort of be a little delayed. So this is just a way to control um, how far ahead or how far behind you want the drum groove uh, to be. Um, it's, you know, for heavy rock and stuff like that, you may want your transients to be a little more out in front of the you know bass and guitars, whereas if it's something more laid back, maybe you want to to pull back things and, and let the transients just sort of line up with uh, everything else in the groove. The dynamics knob controls the amount of dynamic variation for each kit piece of the drum kit. So if you pull this up, you'll get more variation in the performance velocity of the kicks, the snares, the ghost notes, and the cymbals and toms. If you pull this down, things are going to be more uniform, so there's less dynamics. So all of your kick velocities will be more uniform. Your snare velocities will be more uniform, ghost notes, etc. Every single snare hit sounds the same. Every kick hit sounds the same. Every ghost note sounds the same. Whereas if you pull up the dynamics, this creates some uh, variety, some, some variation in the uh, performance velocity of each note. And then you can humanize this. This is just going to push or pull uh, sort of at random the position of certain notes. It'll rush certain notes and then make other notes maybe be a little bit behind just to sort of make this sound more like a real drummer is playing and not a drum machine. So here's with humanize all the way down. And if we look at that in the piano roll editor, you'll see that just about everything except for some of these little ghost notes are pretty much directly on the grid. Whereas if I were to humanize this a bit and then convert to MIDI again, you'll see that even more of the notes are starting to uh, drift off of the grid lines. Again, this is just mimicking the natural variation of a real player. And then under tempo, you can choose standard, halftime, double time, or automatic. So halftime is gonna slow down the groove So it's half speed or half time. And then double time is gonna double the speed of the groove. Not really what we want here. So let's go back to standard. This is really helpful if you have a song where like maybe you've recorded it at 150, but the actual groove is like 75. By default, drummer is going to follow whatever your marked tempo is. So if the groove is really feeling like 75, you would put this in half time and that will compensate for that. Or likewise, if you record it at 80, but the song is actually 160, well, you're gonna wanna use double time instead. Now, the last thing in here I wanna show you is under manual. And here, you can actually create a manual kick and snare pattern. So if I do something like that, it's just like a standard four beat, and then let's add in some additional notes on the kick. And then maybe 
Uh, and you know what? I'll just leave the ghost notes alone because if you are using ghost notes under the details page, it's still going to add ghost notes in here. So just think of these notes in the kick and snare as like the main hits, the main accents in the groove. If you want something a little more complex uh, or you just want a longer pattern, you can select two bars, three bars, four bars. And this functions a lot like the step sequencer. It's essentially just a, a mini version of the step sequencer. Um, so I could do something like that. There we go. And there we go. So that is a walkthrough of the acoustic drummer in Logic Pro 11. In the next video, I'm going to show you some ways to customize your uh, acoustic drummer patches and customize the sounds and how to use the producer kits, the multi-track kits that are included in Logic 11. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.